Today I'm releasing, I guess, a remake of a video I made some time ago about calculations for stop loss and volume based on risk. Uh, and this is mainly because I've received a couple of questions recently about this and I thought perhaps it's time to remake the video and maybe I can explain a little better than I did the first time through. The typical situation for this might be that you are basing your trading based on, say, a percentage of your equity and so you want to know the stop loss or the volume to trade to meet that percentage risk. Now, there are three key factors in calculating these risk-based trades. There's the risk amount, and that's the amount in your deposit currency that you want to risk. There's the lot size or the volume that you're going to trade, and the stop loss. And this stop loss isn't the stop loss price, it's the distance of that stop loss price away from your entry price. Now, given any two of these, you can calculate the third. But one thing people keep asking is, if I want to risk 1% of my account, for example, what lot size should I use and the stop loss? You can't calculate two of them given one. You must decide on two, and then you can calculate the third. So I'm going to show three separate functions plus one utility function, and these three functions will calculate each of these three given the other two. Now, firstly, let me point out, risk amount here is in your deposit currency. Uh, it's regardless of the currency pair that you're trading. So your deposit currency could be US dollars and you might be trading a cross currency of Euro and pound. But the risk calculations will all be based on current prices. So if you're calculating something for a stop or a limit entry where all of those prices might move, the risk will change by the time the price is hit. And that's because the risk is based on the relationship of your deposit currency to the currencies that you're trading. Also, the calculations here don't perform rounding to meet specific rules of either the lot size or the stop loss. So I will leave you to do that outside these functions. These are pure financial calculations and it's up to you then to convert those to something that you can use in the trade. Uh, I have another video that shows how to normalize lot sizes and I'll point to that in the description and if I remember I'll put a card on the screen. But because lot size and stop loss will need to be rounded in some way to meet trading rules, that means the actual risk may vary and also because you have slippage involved you may not achieve the exact risk that you set out to achieve. And again, after you've taken the trade, if you're trading say the euro pound cross currency and your deposit is in USD, if the price of euro and pound relative to USD changes while that trade is live, then it will also change the risk amount. So now let's go to the code. I'll show the three functions to calculate each of these and the one utility function that they all use. Now I have here the beginnings of a script that I'm going to be using to demonstrate. Uh, I'm setting a fixed symbol, which is euro USD. doesn't really matter what the symbol is. Uh, I'm setting a volume 1.23, a stop loss delta of 567. So the stop loss delta is the distance between the price and the stop loss price. So this is how much I'm going to lose in terms of stop loss distance. And then the risk amount, I want to risk 345. Now, as I said, you can only calculate one of these. So I'm going to be writing three different functions and they will each use two of these three. I'm going to start with the one that's probably least used, and that is to calculate the risk amount. So given a volume of 1.23 and a stop loss distance of 0 0.00567, how much am I risking? So for the risk amount function, I'm passing in the volume and the stop loss delta. So this is the distance from the entry price to the stop loss price. And I'm not passing in a string, I'm passing in a string symbol, which is defaulting to null, which will give me the current chart symbol. And the risk amount is going to be returned in your deposit currency. So regardless of the symbol you're trading here, 
comes back in your deposit currency. So your deposit currency could be USD and you're trading Euro pound. This is going to return the amount that you're risking in US dollars. The value per point first is coming from a function value per point where I'm passing in the symbol and I have to write this function. So we'll get to that in a moment, but that is a very key function. I just wanted to write the rest of this risk amount first to show that. I need to finish the function. Then the size of a point, I get that from symbol info double for the symbol and symbol underscore point. Oh, and as I mentioned here, this is not constant. If you are trading, uh, let's say your deposit currency is US dollars and you're trading Euro USD, then the value per point will be constant. But if your deposit currency is US dollars and you're trading something that doesn't have US dollars, then this is not going to be constant because it will depend on the exchange rate between those two currencies and the US dollar. So you should calculate this in every call and not simply grab this once at the beginning of the code. Now I get the size of a point, that's from symbol info double, symbol, symbol underscore point. The stop loss points then is the number of points that I'm risking. I've been passing in the stop loss delta and the reason I'm not passing this in as points, it's quite easy to simply say, this is my entry price, this is the stop loss price and the stop loss delta is the difference between the two and then this function internally takes care of converting that into points. So I have the number of points that I'm risking I have the size of a point. The risk amount then is simply the volume that I'm trading multiplied by the stop loss points multiplied by the value per point. And I forgot to mention this value per point is the value for one lot. So if you're only trading 0.1 lots, then your volume will be a tenth of that value per point multiplied by the number of points you're risking. And then I simply return that. That's pretty easy. But let's look at the value per point. That's the important function here. So again, I'm passing in a symbol which defaults to null. Value per tick comes directly from the symbol info double function for symbol trade tick value. And this returns the value in the deposit currency of a single tick movement of this symbol for one lot. And that's why my results come back for one lot. So this tells me, for example, $5 per tick for whatever that symbol might be. Then I need the tick size. And this is the point that a lot of people skip. Tick size is simply a size in price movement of a single tick. And point then, using symbol info double symbol underscore point, is the size in price movement of a point. These two are almost always the same, but not guaranteed to be the same. And the shortcut a lot of people take is to simply assume that there is one tick per point. Uh, it's very simple to add a second line here and perform the calculations correctly, so I don't know why people don't do that. But you get tick size, you get the point size. The number of ticks per point then is just the point size divided by the tick size. That's all it takes to get this right. And then, of course, the value per point is the value per tick multiplied by the number of ticks per point. And then you return value per point. So again, this will return the value in your deposit currency of a one point movement in the price of this symbol for a lot size of one. Okay, so that takes care of risk amount. Let's look at a more useful function here. Uh, typically people will want to set a stop loss or a volume. So let's start with the stop loss. So in this case, the risk will be returned as a price movement amount. And if you wanted to get your stop loss price, then you have to add or subtract that from your entry price, depending if you're buying or selling.
So same value per point function, that's critical. The size of a point, that's the same call to symbol info double. That means that my risk per one point movement is the value per point multiplied by the risk volume. So remember this returns, or this returns the value per point for a one lot volume. If my volume is different, then I simply need to multiply that by my volume. The risk points then is the amount that I'm risking, passed in here, divided by the risk per point. So if a risk per point is $10 and I want to risk $100, that's 10 points. And then of course the risk delta is the risk points multiplied by the size of a point. And I just return that. Now, I could shorten all of this and put it into a single line of function. Uh, I'm writing this in multiple lines just because it's easier to show you what's happening. But if you wanted to compress this into a single line, you can do that. And now the last function I will show is calculating the volume. Now, as my note here says, this will calculate a volume that will give the risk based on the amount and the stop loss delta, but that volume may be an invalid trading volume. Uh, so it may come up with something like a volume of 1.7793, and you'll need to take care outside of this function on routing that off. And I do have another video that shows how to effectively normalize volumes. So again, the value per point, you see why this is a very useful function because I use it in all three of these risk calculations. Size of a point, stop loss points, this is the same as I calculated in risk amount. It gives the total number of points to my stop loss price or for the stop loss delta. Then the risk per lot is the value per point multiplied by the number of stop loss points. Now I'm calling this risk per lot because remember that this value per point is for one lot. And then the risk volume is the risk amount divided by the risk per lot. And then I just return that risk volume. So now let's add some print statements and call each of these functions just so that we can run a test. I think that's all right, let's just run a compile, see if that's, all right. And now I'm going to run this and you'll see the results in the experts tab. And here they are, risking a volume of 1.23 over a price range of 0 0.00567 is a risk amount of $697.41. Risking $345 over a price range of 0 0.00567 as a volume of 0 0.608466, which I obviously would need to round to 0.61 or 0.60. So the actual risk is going to be different to 345, simply because I'm going to have to trade a different volume to this. And risking an amount of $345 with a volume of 1.23 means I need a price range of 0 0.002805. And I've shown enough decimals here to show that this will need to be rounded as well. And so the risk again will not be exactly 345 because I will have to change that price range. So that's it for calculating risk-based pricing and volume sizes in your trading. Just remember, the key thing is this value per point, and don't skip out on calculating the tick size and number of ticks per point. So if this has been useful, click that like button, and if you want to see more videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. Thank you for watching.